welcome to another edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show. I'm Gary Mack, and I'm joined, as always, by the unflappable, the irreplaceable Mr. Rich Baxter. Rich, how are you on this Wednesday evening? Doing great, Gary. Awesome. Thank you for the introduction. And yes, unflappable as well. Uh, on your end, and uh, we only have what about eleven days left? Ten game, ten games left, ten days left in the season. Yeah, that's that's true, and and uh, it's coming down. You know, we're starting to get teams clinching, and uh, Atlanta clinched, LA clinched their divisions, and uh, Minnesota's on the verge of it. There's still some question mark. Milwaukee has a six-game lead in the NL Central, and uh, Baltimore in the AL East, and uh, Tampa Bay are fighting it out. Baltimore's got a two-game lead, and the hot race is the NL West, where uh, Houston has a half-game lead over Texas and Seattle, so that one looks like it's going to go right down to the wire, Rich. Yes, it is, and uh, like we were talking about a little bit earlier, uh, the wild card races are in full play, mainly in the National League, as we were talking about. And a um, few teams still left to be determined in that. The Marlins are battling it out. And, um, you know, a couple other teams as well. Arizona has fired off well. They've won four or five in a row. And uh, they've propelled themselves right back into the driver's seat there. They're a dangerous team. And I'm. I watched them in midseason. They trailed off uh, the last 30 days. I thought they were gone, and now they're back again. Yeah, coming back, and uh, they've jumped back into that second place, a second wild card position with your Phillies uh, in the first wild card spot. And uh, over in the American League, Toronto has been hot and has jumped into the wild card situation uh, there. So it looks like we have something to watch the last couple of weeks or the last 10 days, I should say, uh, of the season. We're we're, we're going to... Call this episode down the home stretch or down the stretch they come uh, like in a horse race uh, they, as they're closing in on that wild card, the three positions. Yes, we have definitely passed the last quarter pole if it was a horse race. And, you know, uh, what a, it's a happy time because we're getting to the playoffs, but it's also a sad time because we know that that long season – is going to come to an end for a lot of teams. It's already basically come to an end. It's just waiting for the end of the season, <laughs> not the be. Mets or the Yankees or anybody like that. But, you know, October 1st is the final day of the regular season. And if you count the months, Gary, there's about a six month gap then between baseball and starting again. And it's, it's one of our, Banes of the the calendar, <laughs> the winter months, uh, as we get into these cold winter weather and stuff like that. But believe it or not, the wild card starts October third. So uh, look on the bright side. We have the playoffs to look forward to through the month of October, and then it's that long wait to the start of the 2024 season. And but this season went by too quick for me. It did. It went by very quick, Rich. And, uh, you know, uh, we were talking earlier that uh, they're going to be playing into November this year uh, it, if the World Series goes seven games. And that's a little crazy in itself. But at least there's some teams in contention that have domes and some warm weather spots. So if they get in, it won't be as bad. But uh I hate to be playing a game in Minnesota, say, uh, on November 6th or, uh, you know, game seven is November 7th and they, or whenever in November or end of October, they're playing in Minnesota. You get a little chilly there. Yeah, very chilly. As we know, we, we both live in the Northeast and the crazy part of everything is the World Series is not supposed to start until Friday, October 27th this year. Now, 
I think the World Series should be wrapped up by Halloween. A couple of times it was. It was, you know, Halloween, November 1st, maybe. And we used to talk about, oh, baseball is going to go in the November. Now it's November 4th, which would be the last day of the regular, <laughs> uh, last possible World Series date, November 4th. And when you think about it in terms of if it was in the Northeast, that's way too late to uh to be playing baseball in my opinion yeah it it is kind of it it gets a little bit on the chill chill side there but then again they play night games in march and april in the northeast now and uh i've been to a couple of those games and let me tell you uh it, it's not a picnic uh but it is what it is i guess and uh, remember the famous picture a uh, picture of uh, Bowie Kuhn when he was commissioner in a freezing cold night in Yankee Stadium and he was sitting there in a sports coat and trying to act like it wasn't cold while everybody else was freezing around them, you know, because, and that was uh, late October. That wasn't even as late now as it is now. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the game has expanded so much and, uh, you know, if it's in the warm weather, it it'll won't be as bad. And anyway, we'll be in our nice warm homes watching it. So uh, I don't know unless the Phillies are there. Maybe you'll be going to a, a game. Maybe. Um, last year it was a hoot. It was a great ride that they did. Uh, they beat the Braves today. They won the series. Um, blew the game late. You can never count the Phillies in as as winning a game till the, the the game is officially <laughs> over. And uh, you know, like I was saying uh, in previous shows, if you have a weak heart, don't turn on the Phillies <laughs> around the seventh <laughs> inning on because anything can happen. It's usually like a very uh, rough roller coaster ride as, uh, you know, the bullpen was supposed to be so much better this year, but it really hasn't been. I, I got to tell you. And then I've, I'm on Twitter or X, however they call it now for the time being. Uh, and, you know, people will always want to argue, oh, well, the bullpen's been good. Well, not if they're blowing games day after day. I, I don't get <laughs> how some people think that, you know, that doesn't matter. I, I, I just don't see that equation. But, you know, there's so many different various people on Twitter and X that, uh, you know, an opinion for every one of them, so to speak. And uh, there's another saying about that as well, but uh, I won't say it here on this show. <laughs> but right. uh, yeah, the, the Phillies are going to be in the playoffs, whether or not they get that top spot and hold on to it. Uh, they're certainly in the driver's seat again. Uh, can they repeat the magic from last year? We'll see. Yeah, you'll have to wait and see, but half the battle is getting to the playoffs and, you know, once you get there, as we learned last year, anything can happen. So uh, you just never know once they get in what what could go on. Rich, there's another big story that uh, is hit the airwaves today, and that is uh, a story that we have been talking about for the last, oh, I don't know, it seems like the last couple of years. but uh, And that is the Tampa Bay Rays are going to stay in Tampa Bay they announced today with the city of St. Petersburg that they are going to build a new $1.3 billion state-of-the-art ballpark and uh, develop the area on the 86-acre site where the team's current stadium sits, and it's part of a redevelopment program of that, um, that site. The 30,000-seat stadium has the ability to accommodate up to 35,000 for other events, and it will open in 2028. According to Major League Baseball, the new stadium will have three seating levels, a fixed roof, an artificial turf field, operable walls, and a pavilion design, and uh, 15 to 20 acres, including the ballpark and two event Parking garages would be owned by Pinellas County and leased to St. Petersburg and subleased to the Rays on a 30-year lease agreement with options to extend to 40 years. Uh, it, this is a big step forward for um, 
uh, you know, for the Tampa area and for the, the Tampa St. Pete area and the Tampa Rays. And uh, we've been talking about it. We talked about the Oakland situation with the stadium. This one seems to be have been resolved. Yeah, 30,000 seat stadium um, scheduled to open in 2028. But we have heard this story before in Oakland. Um, <laughs> announcements were made several times in Oakland on new stadiums. Never came to pass. And they're about ready to pack up and leave and go to Las Vegas. So we last uh, read on. But yeah, it looks like uh, Tampa certainly has a good plan in play here. Parking garages at a stadium, though, Gary, could you imagine parking in a parking garage for a game? I, I, I don't like that idea. No, I don't either. But you know what? That's the trend now, it seems, in the, a lot of these ballparks. They are putting in these parking garages, and they're even talking about it at City Field, uh, taking part of that. Uh, in fact, they were talking about moving the NHL Islanders there before they built an arena in uh, uh, out here. But uh, there was early talk of building arena in the uh, parking lot at City Field and building a parking garage next to it that would accommodate both the ballpark and the arena, but that plan fell through. Uh, but that seems to be the new, the new thing. But yeah, I get what you mean. How do you tailgate or, or you know, part of the fun is walking through the parking lot and seeing the different people tailgating or just having fun or decorating that you know having that car all decorated team colors. And, and and you lose all of that in a parking garage. And leaving an event after a well, game. Well, that's another story. <laughs> I mean, I hate to leave a parking lot when it's full uh, after a game, but a, a regular surface lot, that is, but not a garage. Uh, certainly not. But, you know, to each their own. And I uh, hope that works out well for anybody that's sitting in there. But uh, an artificial turf field, wow, I would have thought Tampa in that nice sunny environment and all would have been on a, uh, a tur- you know, a real grass field, so to speak. Yeah. I wouldn't have taken them as having an artificial field, but that, apparently that's what's in the plans. Well, they're going to they're going to have a fixed roof, so that would pretty much kill, a, a, you know, a real field. And, and I got to say, the turf that they, artificial turf they have now is so much different than what they had years ago that it's, it's you know, uh, a lot safer and uh, a lot better to play on than in the past. I, I, you know, even here in the minor leagues uh, uh, in Brooklyn, the Cyclones have a completely turf field, everything even the infield and everything, but they have the only thing that's real dirt is uh, the home plate area and the pitcher's mound. Everything else is turf, but it um, they have it to look like dirt. If that, if you can picture that, uh, yeah. and and um, and it works very well, and it it doesn't seem to be a lot of injuries, uh, and, and a lot of places are going that way, especially in the minor leagues, because it's just uh, more cost uh, prohibitive or, or cost effective, I should say. So, uh, I, you know, they have this prescription turf now, and and we see it in football stadiums, and it seems to be okay. But uh, this is a big thing and a big move for Tampa Bay. Yeah, and we've seen the Tampa Bay Rays have a good season in the last couple seasons, but they are not drawing to the to the amount of fans you would think they would. They have an average of 17,750 thereabouts this year at home. I think they're drawing more on the road, 27,000. They are in the bottom four of the top drawers in attendance in baseball with a good team. Now, that doesn't hold too well if the team... <laughs> should slip but uh, apparently the rays are are going to get this done and uh, you got to be happy for them because it looks like baseball will be staying in the tampa area professional baseball that is and and you never know i mean with with a 
you know, first class facility and everything that might get more people out. And uh, let's be honest that 20,000, if they can get the attendance up to 20,000, uh, doesn't look as bad in a 30,000 seat stadium as it might in a 50,000 seat stadium. So, uh, you know, I, I guess they're hoping to, to jack up the attendance a little bit. They do seem to draw in the playoffs. So that's where a lot of money gets made as well. So, uh, you know, we'll see how it all works out. But this is good news that they're going to get a, a top of the line of stadium and a facility that, that everybody will be happy and uh, they won't leave. I hate to keep see teams uh, leave. Uh, areas you know especially when they've been successful yeah and we did see oakland announce things like this in the past fantastic looking stadiums uh never came to pass so evidently they will be leaving to las vegas but um we've talked about that in the last couple shows but we continue to read about that so um I think you mentioned last podcast, where would they play? They're going to need a place to play for a while because uh, Oakland has turned up the heat on them as far as, uh, you know, if you're going to leave, leave type of thing. So, yeah, yeah. But baseball there to stay in Tampa, it seems. And uh, Gary, another big story this week is the oblique injury to Shohei Otani. He hasn't played since September 3rd, but. He's also just went under uh, the knife for the UCL injury that he has, the torn uh, ligament, and uh, plans a return for 2025 to the mound. But what is that? Where does that leave him for 2024 and the hot stove when these teams are going to be bidding on him? Does that diminish his value, do you think? I, I think it should. I mean, you know, if you're when they were talking about it early in the year, you you were looking at a guy that you were bidding on or was going to ask for a phenomenal amount of money, but it was a pitcher and a DH. Now, essentially, you're going to get a DH and you may not even get him for the whole year because, you know, he, if he just had it now, he's got to have some time to recover. Uh, Bryce Harper didn't come back until when did he come back into the lineup? Uh, in May or something, June? It was a record of 160 days. It was one of the fastest returns from that surgery that any player has seen. So he was an anomaly in this, and he's not a pitcher. So um, I think, you know, a 2025 return to the mound by uh, Shohei is very possible. and But what we need to discuss is how much money per year, what kind of contract do you think he's going to get? Is he going to get this half a billion dollars that we've seen thrown around uh, before the injury? I, You know what? I, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I'm sure there might be a team out there that would throw it his way. But to me... If if he's just, it's like a half a player. I mean, he's essentially, you're hiring a designated hitter. And yeah. uh, at this point, and you don't know, you're going to take a chance on a guy that you don't know if, if coming back and being a designated hitter is hurting his recovery of that uh, injury for a pitching you know, yeah. uh, uh, because you, he's got to swing his arms. He's got to use that arm to swing the bat and everything. And, and whatever, if he gets hit or, you know, hit by a pitch or something, um, I, I just don't know. And I'm not, I don't know if teams, uh, are going to take a chance on that. My guess may be that he'll sign a one year deal somewhere. And then, then we'll go from there after the 2024 season to see how the arm is at the end of that year and uh, and go from there. Uh, but, you know, he's an impact hitter. But, Rich, do you want to sign, pay half a billion dollars 
for a uh, designated hitter, maybe an outfielder if he can't pitch, or a diminished pitcher at the least. I don't think I want to go 10 years for something like that. And he's, what, 29 years old? Uh, Yeah, yeah, I I don't see it. Have we seen the best of Shohei Otani, I guess, is is the question. Um, Last year, uh, Yankees outfielder Aaron Judge received one of the largest uh, free agent contracts in baseball history, nine years, $360 million. Um, it was said that Otani's value would be higher than that, but what is it now? I think it, it sits underneath that contract at 360 million. Uh, of course, Mike Trout signed for nine years extension, 426.5 million, which is astronomical uh, a couple years ago, even with the angels, but you know, where have they been in the playoffs? But, um, I don't see a team paying Shohei Otani more than 350 over an, probably uh, his longest contract of um, that he'll have during his career. So uh, let's see what happens this offseason. The usual suspects are in the mix for him being the Dodgers, the Yankees, and the Mets, the top metropolitan areas in the country. Teams that can afford to pay that kind mm-hmm. of salary. He's not going to Milwaukee. <laughs> He's not I, going we to... don't know. We don't know if he if he'll want to leave the West Coast even. So you know it. it uh, you know, will it, it'll be interesting to see what the Dodgers are going to offer. And like you said, the Yankees uh, could be interested. The Mets are supposedly interested but uh i'd rather go if if i was the mets i'd go after cody bellinger and and here's the stupid part i advocated for that this year when he wasn't having a good he was coming off a couple of bad years i said pick him up cheap pick him up for three years at a cheap and they didn't do it and now he had a a big year and now teams are gonna have to pay through the nose to get him uh, and rightfully so. Yeah, and as we talked about um, a little bit ago, you and I, um, if your team needed specific areas of improvement like pitching, wouldn't you rather have two hundred and seventy-five million dollar guys that are bona fide pitchers? And I'm not talking about the Mets pitchers of last season that they just got rid of. I'm talking about two good guys that will be on the market this year and still have money left over and don't hire a guy like Shohei Otani. Build up your team with good players in areas that you need them, not just to bring a DH on for a year and then a question mark for for several years. Sure. I'd rather rather get get a guy like Blake Snell or an Aaron Nola for – Three, four years, which which does two things. It gives me a solid uh, starting staff, and it bridges the gap to what the – as far as the Mets go, they want to develop talent on a minor league level, and they are doing that. Uh, and they've got some pitching prospects, but they're a little lower in the system or the middle of the system right now. So, uh, you know, a four-year contract to a Blake Snell or, or – a uh, Aaron Nola, uh, you get two quality starters there for the price of an Otani that that's not even going to pitch. So you still got to go, uh, in the Mets case, I'm talking about, they would still have to go out and sign pitches or get pitches. So take care of the pitching and the bat, you know, will take care of itself somewhere along the line. Yeah, and don't put all your eggs in one basket. Look at Steven Strasburg. Uh, the Nationals threw a bunch of money on him. Well, he's going to retire after this season. Doesn't even, not even with the Nationals anymore. And there's a contention with that. And they're going to still have to pay him a ton of money. So um, these teams, look at the Angels. For the past several years, they've had a Shohei Otani. They've had Mike Trout on the team together what have they done collectively nothing 
nothing. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Just because you have one of these players on your team doesn't write a ticket into the playoffs or the World Series. So good luck to whoever signs them. I know the Phillies won't be in the mix because they already have two hundred, two three hundred million dollar <laughs> players. <laughs> I wouldn't even want him to sign him, to be honest with you. But, you uh, never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you never know. But um, almost about ready to wrap up the show. Ten days left to the season. Any uh, final thoughts this week, Gary? No, we're going to wrap up the show, and, and uh, we're going to wrap up the season almost in, in yeah. 10 days. Like you said, just going to keep an eye on the playoffs. And, uh, uh, yeah, if I may, uh, speedy recoveries to uh, Gary Woodland, the golfer. Uh, people that know me know I love golf as well. And Gary Woodland, the 2019 U.S. Open champion, had a brain surgery to remove a lesion from his brain. So a speedy recovery or prayers are with you. And uh, Rich, we were talking earlier and you said Charlie Manuel, the former manager of the Phillies, uh, suffered a stroke the other week. So quick recovery to both gentlemen and uh, get well soon and best wishes. And we need you back in our sports. Yes, Charlie Manuel, one of the good guys of baseball, uh, the most popular and the most successful Phillies manager ever, believe it or not. I don't know about most popular, but uh, let's just say the most successful. But, uh, yeah, certainly a great guy. And, um, yeah, best speedy wishes to recovery to both gentlemen there. And, Gary, you have yourself a great week. The next time we'll be talking, we'll know a little bit more about the matchups uh, that will start for the wild card round, which begins October 3rd, and then our division series, which begins on October 7th. Yeah, we'll be breaking them down as best we can uh, next time we talk to you. So, Rich, have a great one. Yep, you do the same, Gary. And we'll also review our picks that we made way back when <laughs> in this season. We're going to do that next show. So uh, stay tuned for that as well. <laughs> All right, we'll see you then. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs>